Okay, so here we are back. We are in section 2.1 to 2.2 looking at normal strain. This is example one in your packet, okay? So we have an axial load. Remember an axial load is, is acting through that cross section, that longitudinal cross section. It's that normal um, perpendicular load through the cross section is applied to the ends of a bar shown. The total elongation of the bar between A and C is 0.15 inches. So the total elongation, if I look at this overall uh, bar as I load it, okay, its overall elongation is 0.15 inches. I'm in segment two of the, in segment two, the normal strain is measured as, so here we are measuring the normal strain of section two, that's B to C, is 1300 micro strain inch per inch. And remember that that just means times 10 to the negative six, okay? So determine the elongation of segment two and then figure out what is the normal strain in segment one. So I know the overall change in length. If I know what the strain is, the strain is change in length per uh, unit length, but it's the change in length over the original length. There's my originals. I can actually calculate the elongation of two, subtract it from the total, get the elongation of one and then work backwards to find the actual strain. So we're going to kind of work with, okay, strain equals change in length over original length. And we use a small, a lowercase delta because we're looking at small changes versus usually a bigger delta is like 55 degrees or, you know, it's, it's big. So um, it's a small change when you see that small delta, small change. And we know that delta is just final minus initial over initial, and then we have that strain. So we are given the strain, we are given the original, I can easily find the length final. I have the total change, so I can get the length final here. I will have the final length, the original, the original, this segment, and that calculate the strain. So that's why I'm like saying you have to learn how to work forwards and backwards. You might be given strain, you know, go back and figure out delta or original length or whatever. You might be given this stuff, find the strain. Okay, so let's start with elongation of B to C. Okay, so strain of B to C equals the length final. I mean, really we should label all of these minus length initial divided by the length initial from B to C. So our strain is 1300 times 10 to the negative six inch per inch. Remember it's unitless, but you can put whatever you can inch per inch, foot per foot. It's the same, uh, the same ratio. Length final. We don't know what the length final of BC is, but we do know it was originally 90 inches, 90 inches. So I can multiply by 90 and then add 90 and my final length from B to C Okay, that final length is, um, find my calculator, sorry, my calculator, can't find my calculator, I should already have that out, sorry about that, okay, so let's go back to our calculator here, I apologize, so I have 1300 times 10 to the negative 6, 10 to the negative 6, okay, times 90, oh, that's ginormous, 90 times 10 to the negative, okay, oh, good grief. Okay, 1300 divided by one, one, two, three, four, five, six equals, that's the easier way to do it, times 90. So I get, and then plus 90. So its final length is 90.117 inches. Okay, that means its change in length, which is final minus initial, is 0.117 inches, and that's from B to C. So if I wanna find then, it says, what is 
uh, elongation of segment two. Here's our elongation, that's the delta, elongation. And now we can go back, and if we're looking at the elongation of A to B, we know that the total, the total elongation is 0 0.15 inches, and that has to be the elongation from A to B plus the elongation from B to C. So 0 0.15 inches equals delta AB plus 0 0.117 inches, which is delta BC. Do our subtraction, and delta AB equals 0 0.033 inches, okay, 0 0.33 inches. Does that make sense? Well, it is smaller, okay, it's smaller than BC. It, it, this is shorter, okay, this is shorter. So I would expect it to be smaller because it's just a function of length and this is a smaller length, so it should be a smaller value of delta. Now, if we want to know the strain from A to B, that's going to be the change in length from A to B divided by the initial length from A to B, equals 0 0.033 inches divided by 40 inches, equals, okay, so I have that uh, 0, 0 0.033 divided by 40 equals, and I get 0 0.000825 inch per inch. Well, again, that is a super tiny number. So I can multiply that by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I get 825 micro strains. So it's just 10 to the negative 6. So there is our answer depending on the units that we are wanting. Easy as that. That's all we're doing.